This is Stefan Schmidt for InsiderIowa.com. This week we had one more of the many Republican presidential candidate debates. This one was in Las Vegas. And I had the opportunity to blog it live for WNYC in New York. So we were watching it live and we were commenting on it as the debate was going on. Uh, I was with some of my colleagues from that uh, big radio station and also some guests and the public. And let me give you just my impressions of it. Uh, I found it to be probably the most interesting of the debates that we've had. And part of the reason is that the candidates now finally seem to be really hungry to uh, break out of the pack, to try and convince uh, the public, and especially, of course, Republican voters who go to caucuses and primaries, that they were still in the game, that it was not a two-man race uh, between Mitt Romney and somebody else. And that was, to me, very interesting. So you had Herman Cain, for example, who is now the front runner, suddenly become the guy that everybody began to criticize, everybody began to scrutinize. Um, Herman Cain has a plan called 999, which would create a 9% income tax and a 9% sales tax. And what happened was that economists started looking at this plan and they discovered that 9% uh, income tax and sales tax actually would raise the tax for most Americans by a tremendous amount, 16%, something like that. And Herman Cain, of course, is a Republican, and Republicans don't want to raise taxes. And so he became the bullseye in the attack from his uh, co-competitors uh, and had a big challenge in defending his plan as something that would be good. Um, I thought the most uh, clever comment that came from anyone was from um, Governor Perry uh, of Texas. Governor Perry basically said, look, they don't have any sales tax in New Hampshire. They certainly don't want now to suddenly have a 9% federal tax uh, on goods and services that they buy. And that was a, a tremendous insight, and Herman Cain, I think, was pretty stunned. Uh, I should also add that Cain made some big mistakes in the hours just before the debate. He was talking about throwing up an electric fence along the U.S.-Mexican border that would kill anyone who touched the fence. He later said he was just kind of kidding around, but that was a, a frightening idea to put up uh, high-voltage electrical fences along the border. Um, and so what's interesting about this debate is that all of a sudden the front runner was not Mitt Romney really anymore. Uh, it wasn't Rick Perry who was the front runner a few weeks ago, but now Herman Cain suddenly received the short end of the scrutiny, so to speak. Um, the other exciting part was that Rick Perry broke out of his fairly boring and unsuccessful debating style and he suddenly became feisty, he suddenly became energetic, he suddenly became negative and went after especially Mitt Romney who is still ahead um, overall in, in many polls and it was interesting to see him more uh, animated, more energetic. As we were watching it however, the problem was that he went from being too passive, not being in the game, to becoming obnoxious. <laughs> It was really uh, a sad thing because he became nasty. He began to interrupt and especially interrupted Mitt Romney and wouldn't let him explain something. And in fact, it was so bad that the audience booed Rick Perry for doing that. And so there was another gotcha moment in a debate where the guy who was uh, too laid back all of a sudden became excessively aggressive and yes, he got a lot of video footage and a lot of live television time, but it was probably not very positive. Um, the other candidates um, did okay. Michelle Bachman made some fairly irrational statements that I think probably cost her quite a bit. Uh, she said to uh, Mr. Kane, she said, you're gonna raise the 
sales tax to 9%, but you know what happens in the federal government when you raise a tax or set up a tax, it goes higher and higher and higher, and she said it'll probably go up to 99%. Well, that was just a stupid comment. You know, you'd never raise taxes to 99% on sales. Um, so I think she did herself quite a bit of damage. And Ron Paul was very good, but for some reason he was wearing a suit that was much too big for him. And he looked tiny inside the suit. It was not a good visual. It was not helpful to him. Um, he has a very loyal following, so it's not going to hurt him. Um, and then uh, to finish up here real quickly, um, Newt Gingrich came across still as very smart, very focused, knowledgeable, but he also came across kind of like a professor. And he kept agreeing with the other candidates on certain issues. And that's not the idea in a debate. In a debate, the idea is that you present your position, not that you agree with your competitors. So I thought it was less than effective. Uh, also, uh, he is in bad shape because he hasn't raised enough money for his campaign. He's a million dollars in the hole. So I think Newt Gingrich, even though he's smart and articulate, is actually not going to be doing so very well. The other thing that uh, was interesting was that Rick Santorum uh, suddenly became very animated and obviously he is trying to convince very con socially conservative Republicans who were supporting Michelle Bachman before that he is really the golden conservative, social conservative Republican, um, and it was pretty effective, and he finally got a piece of the action in that debate, but I'm, I'm not sure that he is a contender. I don't think that he is. So that's my wrap-up of it. We have some rest period now before the next debate, and it was, it was a, a very uh, animated debate, I thought, but I'm not sure that the Republican Party still has a front runner. Mitt Romney did pretty well. He was attacked and he fought back quite well. Um, and of course, depending what the sequence is of primaries and caucuses, he's expected to do very well in New Hampshire. And so what we have is essentially a contest that is still in play. The Republican nomination for president is far from settled. The field of candidates that are running on the Republican uh, side uh, is still very big and very diverse. I think in the next few weeks we'll see a little bit of a shakeout. I think some of them will end up using up all their money and will diminish in significance. And that's what I'm looking for. This is Stefan Schmidt for InsiderIowa.com.